Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the one who not here today. My name is uh, Ricardo Fincata. I work together with uh, Professor Tizumi, and I want also to acknowledge my collaborator, Dr. Momi, at the Joint Environment Research Institute of Osaka University. Yesterday's presentation was uh, about uh, the calibration and validation and showing the performances of the DACAD model uh, under a monotonic tensor test for different configuration. Today, instead, I will present a modification of the DACAD damage evolution law to take into account different uh, known proportional load impact. So, <coughs> the initial framework is uh, identical to the one we saw yesterday, so I will just uh, go very briefly on this one and I will focus the attention on the numerical analysis on uh, steel bridge columns. So first of all, <coughs> the aim of the study is to evaluate the capacity of the structure to go under seismic uh, uh, solicitation and uh, uh, there are some difficulties in terms of characterize the seismic load in terms of uh, direction, intensity and also the design of the structure usually based on the maximum seismic event. A uh, previous definition was given by an experimental paper from uh, Nishikawa in 1998 which was basically after the big uh, earthquake in Kobe in 1995. And in our case, we will not uh, evaluate the maximum seismic event, but we want to analyze the response of the structure in terms of a seismic swarm, so a series of seismic shock waves which uh, hit the structure. The model is the same uh, I presented yesterday. It's a fully coupled elastoplastic and damage model, uh, coupled with elasticity, coupled with the plasticity, and uh, characterization of the plastic multiplier. Uh, the importance in this case is that we use the unconventional plasticity model because it can take into consideration the generation of plastic deformation within the uh, conventional plastic domain and this is important because it can give a realistic description of the cumulative plastic strain during the cyclic analysis. So <clears throat> we adopted the second of the criterion I showed yesterday, the more column one if you have modified and uh, uh, this is function of the stress triaxiality and load angle and uh, we assume some simplification like we do not take into account the fact of pressure and load angle on the plasticity so we can reduce from 8 to 4 material parameters and this is the structure damage evolution law I showed yesterday for monotonic tensile test. Now, the idea is to modify the approach to take into account non-proportional loading case. In uh, <coughs> non-proportionality, there is a rotation of the principal stress and strain direction, which uh, triggers a non-negligible component of the stress rate, which is uh, tangential to the, to the plastic potential. We used an idea which was developed in 2001 by Professor Ashiguchi and Professor Tutsumi, that uh, to characterize this kind of uh, tangential stress rate, which uh, from a previous study in, uh, from Rudmiki and Rice in 1975 was defined to be purely deviatoric as, the, as the, the normal stress rate. And just to get to the point, uh, we want to modify the damage evolution law to take into account two contributions. The first one is the plastic deformation which develops along the normal vector to the plastic potential, and the inelastic stretching, which is purely tangential, and it's uh, a consequence of the rising of a, non, uh, of a tangential component of the, of the stress rate. <coughs> Just to show how the model works, we uh, suggest a simple test uh, uh, made in two different loading steps. The first one is an axial test of a, of a plate, up to 10% of the axial deformation to induce a, fully plastified state for the material and after that we induce a simple shear so to trigger a non-negligible components of the, of, the stress, uh, of the stress rate. So <coughs> as you can see we set the uh, uh, material parameter in this case uh, I think it was for aluminum but I mean it's not, it's not really relevant. The thing that is relevant to see is that uh, according to the material constant T3 we are able to take into account uh, plastic stretching along the tangent which contributes to the to the damage evolution. Another important aspect is that the boost of the of the damage is uh, uniquely dependent on the loading condition. Whenever the coaxiality between the principal stress and strain direction is established, like in a uh, proportional loading path, the damage evolution is equal for all the cases, meaning that there is no additional contribution of the tangential stress rate. Now the study case was a uh, 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 steel bridge uh, uh, pier and the uh, experiment were conducted in 1998. There were some previous finite element investigation by Gao and by Van Do. Uh, the numerical model basically is a pier, it's uh, 3.5 meters and uh, mm, all the specific were taken from the experimental paper. Um, 
due to symmetry, we model just half of the sample, and due to the observation that the plastic strain takes place around the base of the, of the pier, we just uh, use a solid element around the base and a beam element on the top. There are two types of load, the P, which is uh, representative for the overall structure, uh, in this case was a highway, and uh, a cyclic uh, horizontal load A, which, uh, whose amplitude actually is increasing during the, during the cycle. We uh, took the material part of the elastoplastic parameter directly from the previous finite element analysis. We just uh, calibrate the damage parameter in, uh, in our case. And as you can see, uh, maybe it's too small, but uh, using a new proportional damage law, we can get a better description of the material performances through cycle. Using a proportional damage law, we have an overestimation of the, of the size of the loop in the ongoing of the analysis, which is also given by, without taking into account damage. Now, we took the same material parameter and then we fit a monotonic tensile test, uh, which was uh, 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 in both this paper, Goto and Bando. In this case, we did it because uh, uh, if we did the other process, like testing first a monotonic, um, a monotonic tensile test, then we cannot take into account the effect of the tangential, tangential plasticity. But uh, if we fit all the parameters to the most uh, to the, to the worst scenario case, we can actually uh, see that uh, uh, even for a simple monotonic tensile test, we can get a good approximation of the material behavior. We did uh, some other tests. This is not really important, just to say that there is a better agreement using the non-proportional damage law. I just switched to the <coughs> uh, horizontal loading criteria for the structure. Uh, Nishikawa proposed the energy-based criteria, which is uh, based on the amount of energy the structure can absorb the loop uh, in terms of work done by the horizontal load against the displacement. So they plotted in the, in the black, in the, in the graph, the normalized absorbed energy per loop, and they saw that after the sixth uh, cycle, there was no more absorbed energy, but the structure tends to decrease the energy absorption. So, as you can see, the non-proportional damage law can catch quite well both the peak and the decrease of the absorbed energy per loop. So, <coughs> we extend the <coughs> investigation in three different harmonic loading, like uh, L1, L2, L3, which has a uh, prescribed displacement, uh, not the critical one, six times delta y, but uh, five times, uh, four times, and three times delta y, which is the normalized displacement. So. I hope that movie works. Yes. So <coughs> we set a critical value for the damage equal to the paper set in uh, Bando uh, 2014. And uh, you can see in white the crack propagation along the, along the circumferential of the, of the pier. And we mapped the damage evolution against the number of cycles. We also mapped the damage evolution against the maximum cycle in the terms of crack initiation. And we can see that we have an exponential decay when the structure, when the, uh, the crack tends to appear on the structure. But we also checked the energy-based criteria, and in this case it's quite difficult to see when the structure tends to decrease the energy absorption because of the type of the loading. So in this case we uh, <coughs> check the experimental cumulative absorbed energy after the sixth cycle, and then we uh, compare this total energy for the, for the three different uh, waves and we obtain a more uh, conservative uh, criteria, uh, which is uh, slightly different from, uh, from the damage criteria we used before. Both of them have some uh, pro and cons, uh, eventually we can discuss about that. And uh, I just want to show some uh, quick analysis on the axial loading. So, uh, most of, in most of the cases, the uh, seismic event is not just unidirectional, so there are uh, most often by axial loading. In this case, we cannot take into account uh, symmetry conditions, so we model the whole of the sample, and we applied two different uh, loads, at, uh, HX and X, uh, HY. Uh, all of them have a uh, monotonically increasing amplitude, and we test uh, three different, uh, three different uh, paths for the, for the loading. A square one, a circular one, and a butterfly tape. Here is the result in terms of the normalized load and uh, against the normalized displacement, both for the x direction and y direction. As you can see, there is a, a sensitive, sensible this, the, uh, reduction for the using a non-proportional damage law. Unfortunately, for this kind of cycling uh, loading path, we don't have experimental data to, to calibrate, so we use the same set of values we use for the unidirectional one. 
And uh, just to show the, the last, uh, the last uh, results, uh, I want to focus the attention on the damage evolution in the most damage uh, element for the structure. And uh, as you can see, the effect of the tangential uh, inelastic structure is quite relevant uh, for both the square and the butterfly tape, but it is really relevant for the circular loading type. Uh, if you want to see the damage maps, actually, you can see that the damage is uh, reaching almost uh, the maximum value in the, in the lower part, which is not on the plastic strain directly along the normal, but more consistently along the uh, inelastic uh, stretching, which is due to the tangential part. So with, with, without considering this uh, additional inelastic contribution, we can, since it, uh, we can underestimate the performances of the structure uh, big time. So it's important to consider uh, additional inelastic, uh, inelastic contribution. And since the time is not, uh, not much, uh, here I give the conclusion. And uh, thank you for your attention.